what the machine tries to do is trick me into thinking that they're doing me a favor by offering me It really is a trick. I can't think of any other more honest way to say it. As a retired financial advisor who now actually lives in Bangkok, Thailand, I'm going to teach you how to use your ATM cash card efficiently while you're here in Thailand and how to answer this question when you get this question when you use your ATM in Thailand. And let me tell you, it's very tricky and it'll cost you a lot of money if you don't know the right answer. You want to know before you do this, when you exchange from Thai baht into U.S. dollars, what is the Google exchange rate and how can I get the closest amount of money to that Google exchange rate. So first of all, avoid those private ATMs or those cash machines that are looking sketchy, that are on like side streets in front of a convenience store that, that it's all by itself. You know, some of these ATMs could have or possibly may have little skimmers that actually steal your data. Uh, in addition to that, they're always set up to have higher fees and have lower withdrawal limits. So you have to actually have more than one withdrawal to achieve what you're looking for. So avoid those sketchy ATMs. Also, you want to find an ATM that is attached to a bank or inside a bank or inside a shopping center that is recorded. Uh, you know, you want that security so you feel safe and so that you know the ATM is safe. So just like at home, you're going to enter your PIN number and press OK. And then after that, you're going to choose a language that you want to conduct your transaction in. And then you're going to choose the amount you want to withdraw in Thai bot. I'm choosing 10,000. Then you have to accept the ATM transaction fee, which is 220 Thai bot or $6.10. You have to accept that. And then you get to this very important question. So the question is, do you wish to convert your home currency at the ATM's exchange rate? So what's happening here is the ATM is actually offering to charge you a fee of 5% in this case to convert your home currency to Thai bot, which your bank is already doing for you at a much lower rate. This is not unique to Thai banks or Thai ATMs. It's actually happening in international ATMs all over the world. And some are as high as 7 or even 10 or even as high as 15% conversion rates. Unbelievable. So stay with me because at the end of this video, I've included a nice cheat sheet for you to find the best credit and ATM cards possible. So when withdrawing cash, always say no and continue without conversion. Okay, so let's just take a minute and review what, what just happened when you saw that ATM withdrawal, okay? Uh, the Google exchange rate for withdrawing 10,000 Thai baht today is $279.52. Okay, so when I tried to make the withdrawal, and I did get the withdrawal, uh, what the machine tries to do is trick me into thinking that they're doing me a favor by offering me a conversion of my home currency. It, it, it really is a trick. I can't think of any other more honest way to say it. It's a trick because your bank is already doing that for you at a much more favorable rate, which might even be zero. So there's, there's no way that the machine's gonna offer you anything good by saying yes to that. It is simply a way for the bank to make significantly more money off their ATMs. This particular transaction today tried to charge me, if you go back and look, a 5% conversion rate, okay? Now 5% in the world of international ATMs is actually cheap. 
because if you go to other countries and even some others here, you're going to see conversion rates that are even higher than 5%. I mean, it's just a trick and that's what it really is and I'm being nice about it. Uh, they can be upwards to 10 and even 15%. So you think about that, what that costs. So let's just say that this 10,000 Thai baht withdrawal today, which is around well, close to $300, if I had accepted the 5% uh, conversion rate, uh, it would have charged me $303 to my U.S. bank account rather than $279. So a very significant added fee on top of the already expensive 220 Thai baht or about $6.10 uh, ATM fee, which, you know, every ATM in the world charges an ATM fee. Uh, so altogether, if I had accepted that, the transaction would have cost me $309.92 to get 10,000 Thai baht, where really I'm shooting for somewhere around $279 to get 10,000 Thai baht. That's a very significant difference. I don't know about you, but I don't want to pay, you know, upwards of $23 just to have an ATM withdrawal of my own money that I already own. That's, that's my money. That's a very expensive day. So the moral of the story, the lesson here is never say yes to conversion on an ATM cash withdrawal. Never, ever. There's just no good reason for it. Uh, so, that is one thing that's really important to know. So what we're also going to do today, in addition to just doing the cash transaction from the ATM, we're going to compare like going to a uh, currency uh, conversion company. Many people, they come to Thailand, they bring cash from their home country, and then they go to these currency conversion places in the airport or even downtown in Bangkok, and they walk in there with a bucket load of cash and they change the currency into Thai baht, the Thai currency, and they think that maybe that's a better way to go. And so I went to three of them today and I did the exact same transaction. I walked in and I said, look, I have 10,000 Thai baht, I want to convert it to US dollars. Or I have 280 US dollars, I want to convert it to Thai baht. So the big question is, is that a better deal? Should I be doing that? But if you do that, you have to note a couple of things. Number one, you'd have, you're gonna to have to bring a bucket load of cash from your home country. And when that cash is gone, well, you can't do that anymore. The other thing is every time you go to a currency conversion place, you need to bring your passport, very important. And you're gonna to have to fill out a form. So, and you're gonna pay a fee. Now they might say, oh, there's no commission, no worries. Oh, no, no commission, no fee. Well, nobody does anything for free and you can't expect them to do anything for free. But what happens is they take the spread on what they pay you. So they don't pay you that Google rate. They don't pay you that actual real rate. They pay you a rate that is a little less and the spread between that is, is how much they take. And you know, that's fair, but it depends on how much that spread is. So what I wanted to find out today with my experiment is do these three currency conversion companies offer a better rate or a worse rate than using my ATM card? So I'm gonna take you to three of them and I'm gonna show you. One really, really important thing that I forgot to mention a little earlier, Thai ATMs are different than other ATMs in the Western world. So when we process our cash withdrawal in the United States or Canada, for example, the machine spits back your card before you take your cash because you're thinking about your cash. You're thinking about getting your cash and then you're gonna move on to have some fun. You're not really thinking always about that card because, you know, oftentimes we're just not thinking like that. So in the United States, the machine will make you take your card before it dispenses the cash. That's not the case here in Thailand. Here in Thailand, it's going to spit out the cash. It might even spit out the receipt. And the last thing it's going to do is spit back that card. 
and many expats, many foreigners walk away and forget. And after so many seconds, and I don't know whether it's 10 seconds or 30 seconds, the machine withdraws back the card and that card is gone. I mean, you know, I hope that never happens to me where I have to try to retrieve a lost card like that, but I have friends and I know of others that this happened. Um, you can't just walk in the bank and say, give me the card back because the machines are serviced by somebody else and often it's you know, a long process and forms to get that card back. Okay, so in summary, what I'm telling you is make sure you're always thinking about getting the card back and just know that when you use an ATM here, that the last thing you're gonna get back is the ATM card, your card. Uh, very different than the US and it can really mess you up. This is really important so you don't ruin your vacation or or you don't have to suffer with a lost card. Nobody wants that. So, you know, the big question is how well do you know your ATM cash card? How well do you know your credit card? Does your ATM cash card uh, charge you foreign transaction fees? I mean, does it? You should know that because that is a very big fee that you're going to be charged every single time you make an ATM withdrawal or you you use your ATM cash card uh, to buy anything internationally. And usually that fee can be up to 3%. So you think about it. You spend $1,000, they're going to whack you uh, an additional 3% or $30. And there's no need for that whatsoever. So make sure you have uh, an ATM cash card or even a credit card with no foreign transaction fees. That's really important. So check with your bank, uh, make sure that you don't have foreign transaction fees. And I will tell you that my uh, ATM card has no foreign transaction fees. It also has no ATM fees whatsoever. Uh, it doesn't have any ATM fees on my own card in their own locations in the United States or Canada. It also doesn't have any ATM fees on any other ATMs that I use that are non uh, part of the, not part of their institution. Uh, mine's a pretty special card. Uh, I would tell you that if you can get a Charles Schwab ATM cash card, uh, that is your best bet. If you can't, there's other ones out there that offer similar uh, options, but uh, you definitely want an ATM cash card, credit card with no foreign transaction fees. And you want to actually ask, does that ATM offer low or reduced um, ATM withdrawals? And if in fact they don't, okay, what is the fee? So if it doesn't offer reduced or no ATM fees, you're going to get whacked from your bank on your end for using an ATM abroad. And then the ATM abroad is going to whack you for using it there. So let's just run that by for a second and talk about what that could cost. So here in Thailand, if you don't have a card like mine, you're gonna get whacked 220 Thai baht or $6.10 from the Thai ATM just for using the ATM. Let's say your bank charges you another $5 to, to, to have that privilege. So that's $11 just to make an ATM withdrawal. If you're only withdrawing $50, okay, or let's just say 1,500 Thai baht or something like that, uh, that is a very hefty fee. That is over 20% just to get $50. So this is something you want to be aware of, okay, because it can add up really quick. And I don't know any of you that really wants to spend 10 and 20% every time you use your ATM. And so make sure you look at your ATM card, your credit card. No foreign transaction fees and try to find one that doesn't have ATM fees on their end, your bank's end, or on the international end as well. So they're out there, I have one, I have several actually. And that's another piece of advice. I like to have two different bank accounts just in case something happens where I lose the card or a machine eats up my card or whatever. So I always have a backup card with a backup bank account. Doesn't have to have a lot of money in it, but you wanna have a backup bank account. So, for example, Chase Sapphire credit card uh, also, if, you, if we're talking about credit cards, also has no foreign transaction fees. And of course, that has a lot of other features too, as well as, you know, like travel insurance automatically that comes with part of having the card. But these are things, you know, you've got to become financially literate. 
Otherwise, your travel is going to be a lot more expensive for no particular reason. I mean, no good reason. So you got to think about these things. Now, no matter what, even if you do bring, uh, let's just say, $200 from your home country to, to have cash in the airport, which I, which I recommend you do that. You want cash right when you get off the plane so that you can pay for a taxi. You know, uh, usually credit cards and taxis aren't always easy, so you need to have some cash. So I recommend you do bring $100 or $200 from your home country and then walk right up to the currency desk and convert it so you have cash right there. I don't necessarily recommend you bring two, three, four thousand dollars cash on the airplane uh, and then, then, you know, go to a currency conversion place. I don't think it's safe. What if you lost all the money? And if you're a long-term traveler like me, eventually you're going to have to go and get cash with your ATM card. So I think a blend of one, bringing some cash for immediate cash conversion is a good idea, but also getting the best ATM card and understanding what is the best ATM card, getting the best travel credit card and understanding what makes a good travel credit card is super important. So I really hope that this video has helped you today. And I want to say thank you very much for, for joining me. And let me know in the comments what your experiences are. And, you know, if I've helped you, please, if I've helped you, give this video a like. And I hope you subscribe and check out some of my other Southeast uh, Asia adventures, and especially my Thailand adventures. I think you'll enjoy many of them, and I think it'll definitely make your, your trip and your adventure a lot better. So thanks a lot.